take a look at who we truly are and not what the world tells us who we are or who, or who we think we are. But first I want to thank Warren Gage. Dr. Warren Gage, he is a brilliant theologian. Uh, this, this forum he has established that seeks to bring free seminary education to pastors and to elders of the church and affordable seminary education to just people like us. You can't afford to go to seminary, you will be able to now. He also has a lot of free, wonderful material on his website that you can access. And a lot of my um, lecture today will be based upon his book, The Romance of Redemption. Amen. Let's hear it. Amen, sisters. Amen. You are royalty. You are the one who is betrothed to God of creation. We are one in Christ, and the two shall be one. Whack! <laughs> Smack me, and I was... And I said, that, that woman had power in those little hands. And the nurse came running. She said, are you okay? I said, oh, I'm fine. I said, but, so if you go visit elderly people, don't put your face close to them until you know them personally. <laughs> Why are we to be joyful always? James 1, 1, 3 says, consider it pure joy when you face trials of all kinds. But there is a deeper mystery here. God's purpose in creating a bride for Adam is stated in Genesis 2:18. It is not good for him to be alone, for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. He just didn't pay for our sins, ladies. We will become like Christ. Rejection can be devastating, can it not? You felt, you felt the pain of rejection, right, ladies? Yes. But before we speak about Tamar's rejection, okay, from her father-in-law, let's hear the words from Julie. Congratulations, she said not realizing that her words would send me into a spiral of shame. Congratulations on your pregnancy. She said that loud enough for everybody in the ICU, all of the other nurses and the patients and everyone to hear. I was so humiliated. No, I was not pregnant. Israel's promise to give the, word a word, the world a redeemer through this humble Canaanite woman's faith. Tamar was credited with building the royal house of Perez, of, of Judah through her son Perez. Her secret life was exposed, and she was subjected to the vilest condemnation. All those who accused her were hypocrites, because none of them were able to cast a stone at her. Where are your accusers, Jesus asked. Does no one condemn you? Although many of us have known the condemnation of the crowds in this life, what a promise it is when Jesus says to us, neither does he condemn us. He says to the guilty, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. That is grace, ladies. That is pure grace. Hallelujah. What a Savior we have. Right, ladies? Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is there for us. In this simple picture of Mary looking into the tomb, the apostle compares her privileges to those of the high priest of Israel. And Mary sees with unveiled eyes the splendor of God's redemption, for she has been chosen to represent the priesthood of all believers. Amen? Amen. A woman. Okay? Not a man, and not one of the twelve. Sorry, men who are here, we love you, but... Okay? Surely as Mary Magdalene looked into the tomb on resurrection morning, all the redeemed hosts of heaven were singing together in wonder. You have made us to be a kingdom of priests, to our God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Then let what God has joined together be rejoiced and announced throughout the kingdom that the bridegroom and his bride are forever one. Amen. Amen. Give your sisters a hug. Give each other a hug. Hug your bridal sister. You know, I really try to just give thanks to the Lord for everything because Listen, there's so many more women suffering in other parts of our world, right? 
So let's give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. Amen. Amen.